Good morning, good morning to you, my brothers and sisters. Oh, magnify the Lord, for you. let us exalt his name together for another day, another day of extended grace and mercy he's bestowed upon you and I to allow you and I to come and worship him. The word of God tells us we should worship the Lord at all times. Bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually and be in our mouths. And the word of God tells us when praises goes up, blessings come down. God wants to worship him and the spirit and the beauty of holiness on today. I pray my brother and sister you are excited and as grateful as thankful as I am to be um, in the land of the living one more time, one more day that God has allowed you and I to be in the midst and the midst of the people in the earthly realm to make a difference and show forth the life and the light of Christ Jesus that should shed through our lives because of our relationship with him. My brothers and sisters, I'm so excited to be back with you all again on uh, this week. I know I've been going for a couple of weeks, but I just thank God that allowed me another opportunity to be with you on today. And I do want to encourage you. Most of all, I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers and your words of encouragement that you uh, bestow upon me that encourage me to continue, to continue press the words of Mark for the prize of our high calling and Christ Jesus. So I just give God all the honor and glory and praise that's due unto him. Um, big brother Jesus always saying, heaven on the right hand of the Father, still alive, well, and interceding for you and I. And still, as Jesus said, he's a God that never sleep nor slumber, all knowing, all seeing God at all times. We just give him glory and praise, and even for the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit that unifies you and I together, spend many, many members in one body, and unify you and I with the Father and the Son, now that we are sons and daughters led and guided by the Spirit of God. So my brothers, I'm going to encourage you briefly on today from Ephesians, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 20, and Romans, the 16th chapter, verses 25 through 27, prayer requests to speak boldly, the mystery of the gospel, prayer requests to speak boldly, the mystery of the gospel, and that should be a request of you and I on today, whether we are proclaimers to be preachers or ministers or not, we should be a witness here in the earth in reference to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, as the Holy Father in heaven, we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor. We thank you, God, for this is the day that you have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, for allowing people and us to join together today on to have a time, a time to hear from you through by your word on today, God. So we thank you, God, for your anointing, your anointing that destroys every bind in you. We thank you for your word that still saves, heals, and delivers, and set free, and empower, and guide. We thank you, God, for your indwelling Holy Spirit that you sent back, that you sent back to embody us as every born again, believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, to lead and guide us into all truth, to bring your word back to our remembrance in time of need, even in time of need, we're praying and intercede on our behalf. We thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit that is our connection to you and the Son and to our brothers and sisters that are born again believers in the kingdom of God. So we give you glory and praise now, God. Your word shall go forth on today. It shall not come back void. It shall do what you sent it to accomplish in the lives of your people. That you be magnified and glorified in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, I just thank God for the word of God on today. Coming from Ephesians 6 chapter verses 10 through 20. The word of God says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fear and doubts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance, and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Also, Romans the 16th chapter, 
verses 25 through 27 said, Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, prayer requests to speak both of the mystery of the gospel. We see here, this is Apostle Paul um, in, the, in Ephesians speaking to um, those of Ephesus and the faithful believers there. And also Romans, he's speaking to the Romans as well. So we see here, he's what? He's ministering to them the word of God and encouraging them. But the main focus we're going to do today, although I did read the scripture in reference to um, the arm of God, um, I, the primary focus is going to be dealing with the prayer request to speak boldly the gospel of the, the missions of the gospel. And this mission of the gospel is Jesus Christ himself. But the reason why I'm dealing here, first of all, um, you see here, where uh, Apostle Paul is bringing closure, where I say he's ending the writings of Ephesians, and he's saying, finally, brethren, what he's doing is he's encouraging them. He's encouraging them in their relationship with the Lord because he realized their relationship with the Lord is where they get all their power source from. And that relationship is going to be by the power of the Holy Spirit. But we see also he's telling them to do something. He's telling them to equip them. The word of God said men are called, feel chosen, those he called, he equipped. But this is Apostle Paul encourages the believers there to what? Put on the whole arm of God that they may be to stand against the wiles of the devil, realizing that they're wrestling against, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Even he's telling them how that they be able to quench every fire and dust of the enemy. So this armor that he's telling them to put on, that they will stand in these evil and wicked days. So what he's doing is he's telling them well, how they need the armor up. And even the armor up, he's telling them that even with, first of all, dealing with their relationship with the Lord. Not only their relationship with the Lord, but now he's telling them that now you have a relationship with the Lord. Now this is the armor of God where you can equip yourself with and not being physically armored, but in representation of when you're preparing for battle. <laughs> so this here, this armor is to prepare for battle, not just to protect us. A lot of time when we, um, and I've done it myself, a lot of times we talk about put on the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, I'm going to go about the truth, deep shot of pop, preparation of the gospel of peace, you know, and the, the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And and then in prayer, we do that. But a lot of time, uh, I really do believe that we feel like this is something that keeps us covered, that we be protected from all the forces of the evil and the wicked and the darkness in the world today. But my brother says this is preparation to equip us for a spiritual battle, equip us for servitude. And that's why you see here when Apostle Paul is coming to disclosure here, he's then he's going into what? Prayer. He's, then he's telling them that even when he started dealing with prayer, he said they should pray always, verse 18. Ephesians 6, 18 said, praying always. At first he tells them in verse 17, it said, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So with that verse there before um, the prayer, we know we all should be saved. We got to be saved in order to be empowered. It's not just the fact of armoring up and without our inner armor. So, so we see here, this is talking about our outward armor. But then the inner armor is the spirit of God. The word of God says what? Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and life. There's no way to the Father except through by the Son. So when we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we get saved. Then we then dwell the seal and baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we're ready to go. Now we're ready. Now we're ready for servitude. Now we're ready for spiritual battle. Because now we have the power. That's why he told them about encouraging, about being strong in the Lord. And, and the power is might. The word of God says not by power. No, by might, by by spirit, said the Lord. And the spirit is the Holy Spirit that embodies you and I. So we see it also. So we, we got to be need to be saved and born again and baptized to the Holy Spirit of God. Not only that, we need to realize that when he was saying that the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the word of God said, 
The word of God is quick and powerful and sharp than any two-edged sword, piercing even the vine of son of soul spirit, joy and marrow, and discern of the thoughts and intents of the hearts of mankind. So we see here, we need the word of God. We need to be saved, we need the word of God, and we need to be in a relationship. Yes, we know God is in heaven, Jesus in heaven on the right hand of the Father, but he, Jesus made provision when he, as he told his disciples that I must go away. If I go not away, the comfort of the host will not come. That will lead to God to all truth and to empower you. So we see here the same power of the Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead, the same power of the Holy Spirit that he sent back to and by his disciples and all believers, even when the church began on the day of Pentecost, is that same Holy Spirit that embodies you and I as believers. Now we are armored, now we are equipped but we still must grow in our spiritual maturity by the word of God. So we must realize the importance of prayer. Being armored up, having the word of God. Yes, being saved, having the word of God, but we must have prayer. <laughs> Some things come by prayer and fasting, but no matter what, everything should be like this, like bathed and, and led and guided by prayer. Praying of the word of God, because we see here when he's telling them that they should be praying always with all kinds of prayer. Not only all kinds of prayer, but supplication and the spirit. So praying in the spirit, we know the Holy Spirit will um, intercede for us. Sometimes we don't know what the prayers we are. And the Holy Spirit will pray for us, intercede for us, speak in and through us what need to be prayed. And so that's why I said praying in the spirit. Not only that, watching the word of God tells us we should watch as well as pray. And say, with perseverance and supplication for all saints. So not only pray all kinds of prayers, pray for ourselves, pray for all the saints. And the apostle Paul said, he said, I need you to pray for me. So we see here how that, um, and, and he's this special prayer request that he's having. He's praying for them to pray. That he will open his mouth boldly. Not only open his mouth boldly, but he will open his mouth boldly and speak whatever the Spirit of God has given him utterance to say, that he will speak it with boldness. Because we see here, because he's in prison now. He's in prison. He's in bonds. He said, I'm still an ambassador. I'm still a messenger. But I'm still doing all that I'm commanded to do, whether in bonds or out of bonds. I'm going to what? He is going to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said it's a mystery. And this mystery, um, and that he may speak what? Speak as he ought. And that should be a prayer for you and I. I guess you wonder, well, now he's at the end here. He's saying, pray that he speak with boldness. And because you got to realize, you read and see what happened to Apostle Paul. He was beaten. He was shipwrecked. He was put in prison. Him and Silas for what? Proclaiming the gospel, delivering a woman from the spirit of divination. <clears throat> and also, you know, Stephen was stoned to death. When Stephen was stoned to death, it caused the, the saints where they got scattered all everywhere because, like, wow, they done stoned to kill Stephen. Not only that, you know, Jesus himself from, from preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. How they even what? Killed Jesus, crucified him. But Jesus did what he said. He said he would arise on that third day. What? They, he died. That's what the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus promised that he would come back, and that's what he did. So we see here, Jesus was alive and well. It wasn't like Lazarus. Lazarus, that what? Died. He got sick. He died. He was in the grave four days, and Jesus came and resurrected him from the dead because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. <laughs> Jesus Christ himself. So we see here that Jesus rose and got exalted in heaven on the right hand of the Father from whence he came. So we have to see here that this mystery of the gospel that I read here and at the end of the in Ephesians, these scriptures I read today and also in Romans, this mystery of the gospel is Jesus Christ himself. You know how that Jesus Christ, um, in the beginning of time when, um, uh, Jesus was born of a virgin Mary, and his um, earthly father was Joseph. We know God was his heavenly father. That Mary had been a virgin, was overshadowed or power by the power of the Holy Spirit, and considered Jesus, and conceived Jesus. So we see here Jesus Christ himself was conceived of the virgin Mary. And although he was in the earth 33 and a half years, Although he did public ministry three and a half years, and he taught and trained the disciples, and he went from city to city to village, signs and wonders following him. But the mystery of this gospel also is the fact that although the Jews were God's chosen people, and we today, he said, men are called and few are chosen, those he called, he equipped. So they were his chosen people in the beginning, and we are his chosen people because we've been grafted in as the Gentile into the body of Christ because we were it doesn't happen automatically, but the provision through by 
the gospel of Jesus Christ made it possible for all who will believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what Apostle Paul said. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for the power of God unto salvation, first unto the Jews and also to the Greek and to whomsoever will believe. So for those of us that believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's been made possible that we can become sons and daughters led by the Spirit of God. But in the midst of here, um, dealing with the prayer for the bold, you have to realize that even in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, when it was speaking about the fivefold, the, um, he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So that was in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Now we're in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Now we see here how Apostle Paul is telling them to be strong in the Lord, and he's dealing with how they need to the armor up. Okay? So now, since he's dealing with the armor of God, because of the evil and wickedness in the darkness, you have to realize that when we become born again believers in Christ and we are baptized with the Holy Spirit of God and we are to be a witness to the word of God so those who win souls are wise and we are to be a witness in the earth in reference to the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's going to cause persecution. The word of God said, they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And we see here, so Apostle Paul is trying to encourage them and then the portals of prayer and even Although he's still, uh, in spite of the abuse that he's been, he's gone through. What is he doing? He's still keeping the faith. He's continued to complete the assignment because he know that Jesus Christ Himself, the encounter he had with Him, called him to be apostle. He wasn't one of the original twelve, but Jesus Christ, he was not a selected and called by man. He was called by Jesus Christ Himself. So we see here now he's saying that he's in bonds and he's ambassador. He said, "I'm still a messenger." He said, even in my imprisonment, he said, but I still want you to pray for me that I continue to still be bold to speak what I am commanded to speak. And I guess you said, well, imagine well, why he need, he's had the spirit of God, he's guided by the spirit of God, and all he gone through, why? Because you need encouragement. My brothers and sisters, you just think about, it. you know, when um, they arrested Jesus and when they uh, arrested Jesus and crucified Jesus and, and all that, how that the um, disciples, how they was in the upper room, how they was afraid and fearful because they're like, oh God, they Jesus told them that they would do it. They would kill him, but he would rise again the third day. And they was in fearful and afraid. So Apostle Paul was like, that he continued to do it boldness. In this walk of life, my brothers and sisters, trials and tribulation, persecution, and temptation will come. And, but we still have to what, keep the faith. God has not given you an eye spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So what I want to encourage you is it's too often that when we're in a relationship with the Lord, a lot of times we want to be in a relationship with him, but we don't want to walk in obedience to the word of God. Now, a lot of times we pray about the arm of God because we want to be protected and guided, and we want our family and members and loved ones to be shielded from the evil, wicked forces of the world and the demonic um, oppressions and depressions of the demonic forces of the devil and but how often do we realize that this armor and this preparation is for the spiritual warfare in the battle it's still for servitude it's not just to protect us it's to equip us to be a servitude to the people and also what uh, the warfare a good fight of faith that we have because it's going to happen because just because we share the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ Spiritual attacks are going to come. Whether you know whether we're in Christ or out of Christ is going to happen. But the more, because when we are truly sharing, going forth, sharing for the gospel of Jesus Christ, souls will be, that's the only way by mankind can be saved. And we want individuals to be saved, healed, delivered, set free, and empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We need to prepare for this spiritual battle because it's going to happen. But also in this, we need to realize prayer. And so often we pray. We have a long list of prayer requests. We have, Lord, save me, heal me, deliver me, give me a husband. I need children. Give me a job. I need a home. I need a car. I need money. Oh, Lord, deliver me from the enemy. And all, I mean, we pray all these. But how many of us take time to do like Apostle Paul did to Ephesus and to the saints there, asking them to pray that he would speak boldly the utterance that the Spirit of God give him? Um, and that he do it diligently, that he don't walk in fear. How many of us ask someone, I need you to pray for me. That I will, now that I'm now saved, I'm a believer in Christ, and now I realize I have spiritual gifts that I must use here in the earthly realm. Yes, I'm on the spiritual attack. How many of us ask, it, or I'm growing in my spiritual maturity. I, yes, I know I got a call in my life. I don't know which way to go, which direction to go. How many of us are asking somebody to pray for us? 
that we what that we will speak the mysteries of the gospel of Jesus Christ boldly. How many of us doing that? Most times, like pray for me and my husband or children. I'm sick and afflicted. I need a job. I need a car. I need a miracle. You know. But how many often, even when we're in a spiritual attack, and sometimes when we're in a spiritual attack, what we do? We pray that God would deliver us from the, the evil, wicked forces of day, the devil, Satan, and deliver us from our flesh. Lots of times, Lord God, deliver me from drugs and alcohol and homosexuality and prostitution. Lord, deliver me. And lots of times we say this song, God, deliver me from me. You know, all that I do, I do to myself. In other words, that's what the song is saying. But how many of us saying that God, I want prayer, not only ask God to, through by the Holy Spirit, to empower and equip us to go forth and do what we are signed to do. Because I'm a firm believer, when we do what God assigned you and I to do here in the earth, a lot of these prayer requests that we have will automatically manifest without us praying. Because the all-knowing seeing God, all-knowing, he said, man, look at the outer parents. He look at the heart of mankind. Well, God wants us to be a servant here in the earth. Now, this mystery of the gospel is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ himself. And I thank God for the mystery gospel he made it possible that you and I, that you and I could be saved. So we need to see here that you and I um, need to realize that even here in the scriptures, this arm of God is not just to be protected ourselves, but to be equipped for service here in the earth, to be equipped to go and be to be to mediate for those that can't even mediate for themselves. That we go forth, like I told you in Ephesians 4 chapter, equipping the saints. And when it comes to the process of equipping the saints, we come in an attack. When it comes to the process of sharing our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's spiritual attacks. <laughs> Just to be a believer. So that's why sometimes individuals say, you know what? It seems like since I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, I made it matter. I'm tired of living a simple, more lifestyle that's not pleasing to God. I'm not pleased myself, and nobody's pleased me, and, and feel like I'm not even fit for society. And sometimes individuals say, I'm just a number here in the earth. My brothers and sisters, when it comes to the kingdom and the family of God, we are not just a number in the earth. We're just not a nobody. We are somebody in Christ Jesus, because you and I are kids of the king, King Jesus himself. We are his sisters. We are his brothers, and we are sons and daughters of God the Father, that means that you and I, we have been unified as one individual. That's why we need to see here, and also Apostle Paul, when we see here, when he's talking about this mystery, make known this mystery of the God boldly. And you know, we should be praying, God, give us the boldness. If we're born, if we're born again of the Holy Spirit of God, we have all the boldness we need to declare the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have all the boldness we need to be a witness and sharing our faith. We have all the boldness we need to go forth and operate in these spiritual gifts. But what we need to do is realize we have the boldness, but there comes an equipping process. And that comes when we need to start growing towards our spiritual maturity because we see here also in um, Ephesians, the third chapter, Ephesians the third chapter, verses one through seven said, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, Lord, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a four and few words, whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto us, his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be followers and of the same body and partakers of the promise of Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by an effectual working of his power. So Apostle Paul is saying here that this minister is Jesus Christ. Now this minister Jesus Christ, but he is a minister of this gospel of Jesus Christ that we would allow for him to do. And that same knowledge of Jesus Christ that was made known unto him, him he's making it known, made known unto them. And that shows that you and I, even today, although we know in Ephesians, he was talking to those of Ephesus and to the faithful believers there, even in Romans, speaking to the Romans, but we see here that even sometimes when we really realize that um, when we're reading scripture, and just because it may not be to, directly to us, it could be a principle, an example that we can glean from the word of God. 
because it's all scriptures given by inspiration of God's proper doctrine for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness. The man of God be thoroughly punished for every perfect good work. So we need to realize that, that you and I can see how that if we take heed to the same encouragement in the word that he was ministering to them, it's not causing us to sin, it's helping you and I. It's helping you and I to realize that God has no respect of person. He's saying yesterday, today, and forevermore. So since he's the same, he will not have you and I to be ignorant. He will just tell, um, as Apostle Paul was speaking here, to those of Ephesus and those, those faith believers, he was not just, he had no respect of person. He would want you and I to be equipped. How are we going to be equipped? How are we going to be equipped? We're going to be equipped because now you and I, as he stated here, he said it's the spirit of God. So now that you and I are born again believers in Christ and we've been baptized and dwelt and sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, you and I have been empowered. As we declare the same armor, we realize that we don't have to dress up in a physical armor. We need to make sure that we're empowered by that armor and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And we use knowing that our salvation and the word of God and I've been baptized by the Holy Spirit and our obedience to God. And most of all, as I mentioned earlier, when Apostle Paul was telling those of Ephesus, how he said, your relationship <laughs> is not your relationship with the Lord. The armor that you have, now the prayer for others, for yourself and for me, for all the saints. And that's what we should be. Realize we should be praying for all the saints, not just ourselves, not just our church, our denomination, our organization, our affiliation, or our circle of friends. But we need to be praying for saints all over the world. As of today, we need to realize that we have brothers and sisters all over the world, all different races, cultural beliefs, nationalities, all over the world that need prayer. In the same way that Apostle Paul was telling them to pray for all the saints and pray for him for boldness, we need to do the same thing. Individual lives. It wasn't just Jesus got crucified. It wasn't just Apostle Paul beating and whipped and Silas put in prison. It wasn't just Stephen got killed. It wasn't um, just our forefathers and mothers and other believers before you and I, saints that we know not of now, underground, still uh, menacing to individuals, still coming from, out from underground, risking their lives, even some now on the front line, risking their lives for their brothers and sisters, for the souls of all who men. The word of God tells us. That the harvest is plentiful and the labors are few. Praise the Lord, harvest. He raised more labors in His vineyard. That's what we should be doing. Not praying on for more labors, but as He, according to the Word of God, pray that we will have the boldness to speak what the Holy Spirit utters through us to speak outward. See, it's not just for us to speak; it's for us to realize the Holy Spirit of God speaks in and through us. We need to use, allow the Holy Spirit God to speak to us and surrender, not grieve the Holy Spirit, not quench the Holy Spirit. And this is what we're saying here is the same way he was saying about the armor of God, God and being empowered and being armored and being quench the fiery dots of the enemy. We should, the only way we can quench the fiery dots of the enemy, we should not quench the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we should not quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is speaking in through you and I. They give us the word to say, giving us guidance and direction. And, and we don't oh, submit to the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking in and through us. And we're grieving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like, I'm speaking to you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to guide you. I'm trying to tell you, show you how you can come victorious out of whatever state of life you find yourself in, but you're not taking heed. So we want to, too often, we want to quench the fire dots of the enemy, and we want to quench the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but the only way we can quench the fire of to the enemy, we need not quench the Holy Spirit or agree the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is our engine. The Holy Spirit is our um, guide. The Holy Spirit is who communicate to us from God in heaven. God is in heaven. Jesus is right in the Father. So our communication is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. You see here how Apostle Paul is getting emphasis to the Spirit, to the Spirit, to the Spirit. And we need to get emphasis to the power of the Holy Spirit that embodies you and I. So my brothers and sisters, I just want to stir you up realize that this gospel is a mystery and it's going to cause war. You know how I said it's war. The war is on. Because this is no way anyone can be saved outside believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's no way anyone can be empowered by the Holy Spirit without believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. There's no way to the Father except through by the Son. So my brother, I'm just excited. I'm just excited. And knowing that how that even when he was saying in Roman, now to him that is 
of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. But now it's made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of the faith. Now we got to realize this is a mystery. It was hidden. And it's, now it's been revealed because you know in time past in the Old Testament how they was under law but then with Jesus Christ himself, when he was born, um, the Messiah, the anointed one that was rejected, and that even when the church began and the power of the Holy Spirit and by the every believer, and this is a marriage, but we see how he's saying by the grace of God, even his gifts, even the spiritual gifts, is by the grace of the faith of God. He's the one that gives us these spiritual gifts to by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we must go forth and use these gifts. Because if we don't use these spiritual gifts, we are walking in disobedience to the word of God. Jesus is not coming down here on earth and teaching, training anyone else anymore like he did his disciples. God is not coming down here to the earth to do it either. He has left you and I responsible to make sure that now we are born again believers and now we realize that what our sign is here in the earth and using our spiritual gifts and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ in and out of season that men, women, men, women, boys, and girls, men that we just don't see salvation is just for adults. Salvation is for all of humanity. And that means even the children. We don't need to wait till they get 12 years old. I remember when we was coming up, and a lot of time, it seemed like the only time a lot of time people got saved um, from churches I affiliated with was um, when they had revivals. Like people said, well, you know, it's revival time. I believe it happened to us. It's revival time. You need to go up there and get saved because you're going to get saved and you're going to get baptized. And that's what we did at 12. But my brother and sister, we need to be um, sharing the gospel with individuals way before 12. We need to pray for them before they even conceive. Pray for them after conception. Pray for them after their birth. And pray the word of God over them. Pray that they be baptized and feel the Holy Spirit. Pray that they have a hunger and thirst for God. That's what we need to do. No matter what, no matter what life they live in, where they, what they may be doing, we need to be concerned so much about the soul of man that we will pray. Like it's saying here, Apostle Paul said he'd have bones to speak. But we need to pray also the individual have the bones to realize that, hey, I need to go forth. I need to be saved. I need to be healed. I need to be delivered. I need to be empowered. And I don't have to no longer continue to be dominated and controlled by the evil, wicked works of my own flesh. The word of God tells our hearts to see of all things desperate. A lot of us will utterly destroy because of our own hearts, our own minds. God knows. I tell you, sometimes things come across my mind. I know it's in the atmosphere. And sometimes it's something that now the more I read, I'm telling you the truth, the more we read and study and obey the word of God, we, we can self-heal ourselves or we can self-destruct ourselves. Because <laughs> the more I read the word of God, I tell you, the glory be to God, the more the Holy Spirit reveal me to me. And like I said, deliver me from my own self. Because the Holy Spirit of God will bring up those deep things that's hidden down in our unconsciousness that we wasn't aware of. Those things that we felt like we were right and really we were wrong. And what did God tell us about how the ways of man seem right to himself? I mean, our own righteousness, our own self-righteousness, our own pride. My brothers and sisters, we need to realize that God has made provision for us. When he said he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes should not perish. For he sent him into the world not to condemn the world, but the world through him may be saved because he loves us. God loves us in spite of our sin. We were conceived in sin. He knew that. He knew we conceived in sin. And he knew we were sin even after our natural birth, even after our spiritual birth. But that's why he sent back the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us to all truth and to convict us when we sin. So when not to condemn us, therefore there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, but as believers, we're not condemned, but we do get convicted by the Holy Spirit that we repent and he made it provision. He said to confess our sins, he's faithful, just forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us all right. That still got something to do with prayer. The word of God said the fervent prayers are the righteous of much. So if we're going to be the, those that write, the pray fervent prayers and we be the righteous God, that means that when we find sin in our lives, we need to what, confess it. We need to repent of it and turn back to the righteousness of God's word and realize that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. So we see here that we need to realize we need to pray. We're in a time now, deathless, although I wear these scriptures of armor, but I just want to assure you that that armor is not just for protection. That armor is for servitude to here in the earth to equip us. And the prayer that we go forth and go on a spiritual attack, that we, that's why we need to pray for one another. 
We need to pray for pastors and leaders and people that are going to and from all over the world to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. The light, all of our lives is under attack. We're on the hit list. We were on the hit list upon conception. And glory be to God, now that we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're elevated high up on the hit list, glory be to God. Because you just think about one could put one to flight, and one thousand flight, two, ten thousand flight. But guess what? Let's think about when you and I, if we don't witness to one soul and they become saved and they witness someone that's and it keeps going on, that's what you call um, multiplication. Well, the duplication is going to be not us ourselves. It's going to be the gospel of Jesus Christ through by the word of God. See, that's what the duplication need to come in, living a life according to the word of God, not according to our own mind, will, and intellect. That's why when we do share forth the word of God, we need to believe God and pray. And I pray for myself, God. I pray for myself and I pray for others too. That God make me whole, soul, body, and spirit. That um, I'll be one, be complete in him. We just don't want to be saved and feel the Holy Spirit of God. And then afflicted and affirm our bodies. And then be saved. And our mind and will and intellect is not according to God's word. And then we, our mind is all off focus. Because what we don't have not like the word of God, that strongholds in our minds. That's why if you really if you see how the God made his whole soul by the spirit, that when we be born again of the Holy Spirit of God, that's the foundation. But we got to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ before we even get baptized with the Holy Spirit of God. We can't do it backwards. We can't say, well, I want to be baptized through the Holy Spirit of God and have me believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's, it's not going to happen. We may say it. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to manifest. I put it like that. And just how you see here when he was talking about the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret. And even God said his word how that even his disciples, when a lot of times, you know, Jesus spoke in parables. He spoke in parables for those that didn't understand the mission of God. The missions of God are for those um, that are grown spiritual maturity and right relation to God and are uh, allowing the Holy Spirit of God to reveal this the knowledge of God to us and those mysteries and secrets to us. So, hey, some individuals in scripture, how they wish they could, um, some of the mysteries and the revelation knowledge that God, God download to his believers that are far faithful and walk rightly for him in an intimate, close relationship like his three core, like I said, Peter, James, and John, uh, that are more grown, more spiritual, and want to know more about God, want to be God revealed to them or us, what he have the will for our lives or the will for others or the sign he have in our lives in the earth and how we need to ask God to lead and guide through how to, how to teach and train others. Uh, even myself, I pray God, teach me. I mean, because last time we get so much information um, that it takes time, but Lord God, how you want to download it? <laughs> you know, even in our own lives. So that's when it, that's why I just want to start today. My brothers, is a prayer request to speak bold and mystery of the gospel. And that mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ um, that has the power to save, to heal, to deliver, to set free, and to lead in God. Has the power to, uh, glory be to God, to empower us to operate in the supernatural. How, these spiritual gifts are controlled by the Holy Spirit. These spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. But these are supernatural gifts. They are different than just having a talent. They are different than just learning how to operate in a spiritual gift that's not your gift outside of the guidance of the Holy Spirit, um, you have to realize we have false prophets and false teachers. They even say to himself, he know the word, but he won't obey the word. That's why he got dethroned anyway. So what I'm saying is this, you have to realize that, yes, we can have the same um, titles, gifts, and callings, but control some by the flesh and some by the Spirit of God. But the only ones that are operating in the supernatural power of God is by the Holy Spirit. Now, I guess some end of this said, well, I'm operating in the supernatural too. But they're controlled by demons and devils and workers of darkness. That's the difference. That's why the word of God said, even the most can be elect, most elect can be deceived if possible. Because um, a lot of time when we see the supernatural, and the reason why sometimes individuals, some individuals are afraid of the supernatural because they see witches and warlocks and psychics and certain individuals um, secretly and secretly or outwardly showing forth signs and wonders that's not controlled by the Holy Spirit, but they look so close like those controlled by the Holy Spirit that individuals will know the difference. The only way we can know the difference is 
is between the supernatural power of God and the supernatural power of the devil or demonic force or the dark side, as we say, um, it's through by the power of the Holy Spirit and if, it's, and if it's bringing glory to God, not themselves. That's the only way we're going to know the difference and knowing the fruit that's coming from it. So, but we can know that through by discernment of the Holy Spirit. That's why the gift of discernment is so important in the lives of believers because um, we need to be guided by the eyes of the Holy Spirit, not our natural eyes. What the word of God said, walk by men should always walk, pray, watch as well as pray, when we should walk by faith and not by sight. The just should live by faith. So when we do that, we believe as believers that we've been born again and dwelt and sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. We know that um, we need the Holy Spirit of God to reveal of all things. And so you think about Simon the sorcerer. Simon the sorcerer, you know, when those of Samaria was bewitched by Simon, and when he saw Peter and them laying on their hands, and ended up being baptized the Holy Spirit of God, and although he was a sorcerer himself, he wanted to buy the power of the Holy Spirit because he realized that the, the, the apostles were walking in a great authority, dominion, and a power than he was, and he wanted to buy the power that they were operating in. People are like, you better repent. God forbid you want to try to buy the gift of the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he said, go tell Peter, pray for me. He didn't pray for him. But even he was following them, but he wanted more. How can I get that power? So that's why I need to be very careful, even in operating the supernatural of the Holy Spirit, that we don't get so caught up that we start being deceived by our own hearts and self and get in pride, like, hey, I'm a great wanderer. No, no, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that's body. He's the greatest he that is in you and I than he that's in the world. And that is he, the Holy Spirit. The opera, we own a vessel. We're just like Apostle Paul said, he said, I'm an ambassador of Christ. He's an ambassador. We are messengers of God. That means that all that we do, we need to give glory and praise unto God. Because like I said, without God, I can do nothing. You can do nothing. Without God, the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot do great works here in the earth. And like he said, he said, Jesus, I'll go away. And you'll do great works so I'll go to the Father. But he sent back the Holy And he will be with them always. He with them because he said that he will go back to heaven and be the Father. And he will send back another confidence in his name. The power of the Holy Spirit. So that is how you and I are still, as believers, still one with the Father and the Son. That's why he said he never leave nor forsake us. He will be with us even to the end. He's within us because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So my brothers, I'm just excited about the Word of God on today, how that um, this great mystery and secret of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and still many today, um, some will still believe the gospel, some will reject the gospel, but the only thing you and I have to do is go forth and declare the gospel in and out of season. And uh, like Apostle Paul said, uh, he planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. But let us encourage you that when it comes to our reward and our obedience for our um, using these spiritual gifts here in the earth um, to bring glory to God, he's going to reward us separately. And I'm, I'm emphasizing because I've been the spiritual gifts in you. Each and every one of us have gifts, spiritual gifts, or gifts. We have more than one. Because we already got the gift of salvation, we got the gift of faith, we got the gift of grace, um, the gift of the Holy Spirit. But spiritual gifts, ministry gifts, um, like I said, they're in Romans, they're in First Corinthians 12, I believe, also in Ephesians. So I pray that you have been praying and seeking God. What are the spiritual gifts he has you and I to um, use here in the earth for the upbuilding of the body of Christ here in earth? Because it's for not just you and I, but it's for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. So since it's work of the ministry, mean that we should be doing something. And it comes through by works. We don't work out for our salvation. The word of God is by grace that we say through faith, not in works that's in the boast is a gift from God. But our salvation should cause us once to be service in the earth because someone else took time to um, believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, be baptized with the Holy Spirit of God, to be equipped to use their spiritual gifts to teach and train you and I and you and I should do the same thing. It's no more than right. We should do the same thing. I thank God for those that have taught and trained me coming up in ministry. And those are still teaching and training me now. <laughs> hey, to the day of Jesus Christ, none of us know everything. God has not made it where any individual will know everything. That's why he said we're many members of one body. Since we're many members of one body, he has it where we, that we have to come together. That's why we're about to forsake not the similar ourselves together. For some, it's what to edify and encouragement. Encouragement is a gift. Giving is a gift. Administration, government is a gift. 
These are gifts controlled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Word of God tells that um, our gifts and calls are without repentance, but how much more effective we will be that uh, we repent of not um, accepting or seeking God with our spiritual gifts on, then um, be led and guided by the Holy Spirit of God that gives us these spiritual gifts, and not reject the spiritual gift that God given us, and not cover the spiritual gifts somebody else got because we'd like to have their gifts, and it's not a gift God has given us. We need to seek God's what spiritual gifts he has for you and I. Yes, some individuals, they, I mean, it's not just, it's not all like what it, like I said, all like, it's not all what it looked like. It takes time for preparation being equipped. So we need to be um, operating the right spiritual gifts that we can be more effective. And when we find that out, we need to be talking to the pastors and leaders and those training and seeing God through the Holy Spirit. Um, some may go to um, Bible college institutes, some workshop seminars, some may have teaching and training in their own churches. Um, so that's what we must do. Everybody's not, like I said, going to Bible college. But one thing I said, Jesus taught his disciples, when he said, study the show, I said, prove unto him to be a work with need, not to be ashamed, right to divine the real truth. There should be some kind of time that we would sit down and be a student and be taught. I'm still being taught. <laughs> To the day of Jesus Christ's return. So what I'm saying is that we have Sunday school, we have Bible studies, a lot of churches have teaching and training. Uh, but you gotta get be equipped. We gotta be equipped. We're gonna time that, my brothers and sisters. The more um, of us get equipped, the more we can teach and train others. I'm talking about sound doctrine, making sure even myself, I teach and I minister. If somebody taught and said and realized what I'm saying is out of error, not intentionally, then I hey, I just repent and, and walk in the error of truth. I mean, walk out, not in error no longer, but in truth. So what I'm saying, it takes time. But I just want to encourage you, pray. Pray for yourselves. We can pray for ourselves that we will submit. Because like I tell you, we've been in power because we've born again the Holy Spirit of God. We can pray uh, to the Holy Spirit that we will submit to the Holy Spirit speaking in and through us. God, give me the ability or help me or deliver me from myself. Deliver me from the... And most times when we are not... Um, we heard the Holy Spirit of God speaking in and through us and God speaking to us through the word of his messages. Um, and we know it's God. But sometimes fear, fear will try to overtake us. We need to say, God, you're not giving the spirit of fear, power, love, and sound mind. And God, I know you're speaking in and through me. Give me the boldness, Holy Spirit, to, to just let go and surrender unto you. Speak in and through me. That God will be magnified and glorified. Not I, but God will be magnified and glorified. Because we need to realize that the judgment will be again in the house of the God first. And that means that the body of Christ, <laughs> we must see our bodies being a temple of God. So God, spirit embodies you and I. So we host the Holy Spirit within us. And the Holy Spirit that's in you and I that are born again believers, we need to realize that's the Holy Spirit of God is in us. We are the church here represented here in the earth with the Holy Spirit in our temples. And we need to realize that we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to God. And we say, Lord, your will, like Jesus said, Father, my your will be done, not my will be done. That you be magnified and glorified. And that's all we need to do. So my brother and sister, to God be all glory, honor, and praise for the great and mighty things that he's doing in your life and my life. But I pray that from this today, then brief, um, I did mention more on the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of salvation, the gospel of the kingdom of God in heaven. So we realize that the gospel is no more than the good news, good news to whatever it's associated with. Now, we're talking the mystery of the gospel and today. We're talking the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ himself, which is the foundation to salvation. Okay? Then we got the gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of heaven, the gospel um, of peace. As you saw here also in Ephesians, it was dealing with the gospel of peace. And the good news of peace, the good news of peace for us also in the midst of armoring up. Is the word of God said, they that keep their heart and mind stayed on him shall be kept in perfect peace because they trust in them. So we can have peace, but is it perfect peace? Is we Do we have peace that one minute we feel at peace and next minute? We don't want to be double-mindedness in our stability and our relationship with God. We want to be single-minded, single, -minded, single uh, controlled by the Spirit of God, realizing that no matter how uneasy, how much fear trying to take us on, how I don't feel at peace. But God said, if I just keep my heart and mind, said, that's why we need to guard our hearts. That's why we need to realize the importance of the word of God 
as he was stuck with the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit is the word of God. The word of God has so much power. When we declare the word of God under the anointing of God, his word, he says his word should go forth and shall not come back void. When he says his word is quick and powerful and sharp than any two as four, meaning if his word go forth and we believe in faith, his word is going forth to do whatever he's sent it to accomplish, that whether, whether we can see it manifest with our natural eyes or see it manifest at the time of declaration, we believe in faith, it's going to happen. It may not be this second, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but when we believe in faith and we declare the word of God according to the utterance and the guidance of the, and bold by the power of the Holy Spirit, manifestation is going to take place. Whether it take place after you and I have left this earthly realm or whether we never know not, but we need to get in that habit of knowing that when we truly submit to the guidance and the utterance of the Holy Spirit, that when we speak the word of God, whether we see it manifest or not, it's going to happen because God said it would be. He said his word should go forth. And that's what I do. I just minister the word and keep moving. I say, okay, God, that settles it. Hey, and then it's on God. That's why Apostle Paul said, I plant a pile of water and God get increased. So it means that, but no matter what, the one that plant and the one that water are one. So we need to plant and somebody else need to come back and water it. But God is the only one going to give the increase. So that means that you and I have an accountability in the earth to do what God has assigned you and I to make sure that the message of gospel go forth and realize that, hey, that's the only way why men, women, boys, and girls can be saved. And we need to see the importance that the more that, the, that believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, the more um, there would be to help the spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. You and I uh, not, cannot be everywhere at the same time like God and like Jesus. Because he said heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. He's he is everywhere. We can't get around him. We can't get above him. We can't get beneath him. We can't get up in front of him. He just that big. So that's what we believe in faith. So it's no hide. There's nothing that can escape him. So when we go forth and share the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that men, when the boys go cry, what must I do to be saved? They acknowledge that I've sinned. They acknowledge that we're conceived in sin. We can just let them know the word of God said to confess your mouth on the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For man believe his heart unto righteous confession is made to salvation. You just need to believe that Jesus died, buried, and resurrected, that you may have a right to eternal life. That he loved you just so much that he sent his own son. And that's like you said, if this gospel be hid. If the gospel be hid, it's hid because of those that are lost. And that's what I was reading in Ephesians, um, the seventh chapter, uh, third chapter, verse one through seven. If this gospel is hid to those that are lost. And we ourselves were lost until we were had an ear, until we had an ear to hear. And that was in the second Corinthians 4, 3 through 6. Um, I want to read that. That's in reference to the hidden. But Ephesians 3, 1 through 7 was dealing with the mystery of the gospel, which is Jesus Christ. But um, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6 is dealing about the gospel being hidden. And the word of God tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, old things are passed away, all things become anew. The word of God tells the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit, neither can he know them. The foolishness unto him because they're spiritual desire. So since it's the spiritual desire, that means that we must be born of the spirit of God that the apostle Paul was talking about. So now we see him in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, 3 through 6. If someone seems like I can't understand um, the word of God that's coming forth, I can't understand exactly what you mean about the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, and I can't believe it. First of all, they must acknowledge that they're sinners. And, and repent of the sins and be born again of the Spirit of God in order to understand the Spirit of God. That you're saying we're born in the natural, but then we got to be born again like Jesus of Nicodemus. You must be born again of the water of the Spirit of God. If not, you cannot even see the kingdom of God or even enter to the kingdom of God. So we see here in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 6, when it's talking about hidden, it said, but 2 Corinthians 4, 3 6 said, but if our gods will be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So we see him. Satan is the prince of this world. He's the prince of the air. But we see here those that are lost. And when we were lost, 
we've been blinded by Satan, the sin in the world, that we could even believe the gospel. When we see him, unless we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'll still be walking in spiritual darkness. We'll still be walking in blinds. We'll still be living a life of defeat. We'll still be under the domination and control of our sinful nature of the flesh, under control of Satan, who is our earthly father, um, when we are not born again of the Spirit of God, for God to be our Heavenly Father. <laughs> so we just got to realize that we're already born and automatically born in the sin nature. Automatically born. Sentence for hell. When we became born again believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ, now we become believers of God. Now we have saw the light of Christ. He said, Jesus, he is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. And how he's the light of the world is through by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we see here that this darkness, because not having the knowledge of God in our hearts and believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's no way that we can believe in the gospel. And that's why today uh, there's so many that reject the gospel of Jesus Christ because they haven't heard the true gospel. The true gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God said, there is no other gospel. You know how it speaks also, I'm a minister one of these Sundays, on another gospel, which is not a gospel. Any other gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ is considered another gospel for those that's claiming it's a gospel. Really, it's not a gospel. <laughs> Even Jesus said, whether um, anybody that preach any other gospel, whether man or angel, shall be accursed. So that means any of us that preach any other gospel other than Jesus Christ to save mankind will be accursed according to the word of God. Not generational curse, a curse because um, Jesus Christ himself was the one hung on a tree on the cross was made a curse for us. And when we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we no longer under the generational curses of love. We no longer under curses of, of sin nature that we were born with now because we are part of the one that was made a curse for you and I that we will not have to be a curse. But now if we go preach any other gospel than the gospel of Jesus Christ, we shall be a curse. He said even, he's not even playing, he said even with a man or angels. So we need to see here that if the gospel's hid, anyone that said they can't believe and reject it, we need to make sure that we, um, if they were here and they would listen, make sure we rely on the Holy Spirit of God to give us the holy boldness to share the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we will take time. It takes time. That's why it's so very important. When you have Sunday school in your churches, when you have Bible study and teaching training in your ministries and your churches, you may feel like, I'm not a minister. I don't need it. Every born again believer need to know the word of God. It may not be your calling. You just may want to be interested. You may say, well, I would like to go and be a part of this teacher. There's nothing wrong with understanding other gifts. That's not your gifts. It's very important. Know what all the gifts, spiritual gifts, are, how they operate. So we'll know how uh, we'll operate in our gifts and know how that individuals that may say they operate in a spiritual gift but not bearing the fruit of it, not to judge, but that we may not be deceived. We have false prophets and teachers in the land today. And still, like I told you about the supernatural. So it's very important we know how other gifts operate as well as our own and know how it means to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit of God. And even when I just want to share this also as well, that when it comes to... Um, our being focused so much on the let's not focus on let us not be ignorant that the thief come to kill still sure God said come that you may have life and have it more abundantly I want to share that before I say this now the reason why I'm sharing that is because I want you to know that when we spend more time in our relationship with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and amongst the true believers and growing our spiritual material and our obedience to the Word of God and they're using our spiritual gifts, that wherever we encounter other spiritual gifts or other voices other than, because we're going to deal with the voice of God, we're going to deal with the voice of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to deal with the voice of our um, own self and the voices of other voices that's not of God. So what I'm saying is, when we spend more time in our relationship with God, the Word of God, anything contrary to the Word of God and contrary to what the Holy Spirit of God is revealing to us, we already outright know that's not God. We don't have to pray about it. We don't have to fast about it. We don't have to call them and say, hey, this happened. Um, they said this. What you think about it? Yes, there's nothing wrong with sharing with other individuals. Sometimes things happen so fast, we don't have time to converse and Google it, look at our Bibles, look at our notes or call somebody. 
Because sometimes when you try to reach other individuals, you can't reach them. So why not rely on the power of the Holy Spirit that it already embodies you and I that's all knowing all sin and know all things and the reveal of all things. So the more we feed our inner man the Holy Spirit, the word of God, the more we'll be equipped. So when we don't know for sure, I tell you, I feel the Spirit of God, about time Spirit of God, but sometimes I'm just not sure. So I've learned. Just be still. God said, be still. And see the savage Lord said, be still. And know that I'm a God. I've exalted him on the heat. And I've exalted the earth. God can be exalted and magnified. But sometimes we just need to be still. Wait. Don't do nothing hasty. And like I said, wait. You know how it was? They were led by the pillar cloud and the pillar fire in the wilderness, how they were led. So until the Holy Spirit tell us which way to go, just like I said, put a pen, pen, put a pen on it. <laughs> and keep on doing what we know to do. And just don't sit there and keep trying to figure out what we need to do. Pray about it. Go to the next thing. And God is going to reveal to us in the right timing. So let's not be quick to all be hasty to have our answer and to know what to always to do. And just rely on the Holy Spirit of God. But when we get into the Word of God, the answer is in the Word of God. And also in our leaders. That's why we need covenants. That's why we need overseers over our souls. Uh, it's not just about you, me, us doing ministry. It's about us having a watchman or overseer that's in tune to the spirit of God, the word of God, and God can download it to them as well and to us because some things we know not of, some things. And then, too, some of our leaders or those that God allowed to impart into us. Um, as I mentioned before, I went to a church just visiting because I met a young lady here, and I just went to the church and, and um, a bishop, and first time I met him, first time he met me, and he spoke into my life. But the reason why I knew it was God, because from what he said, I say anybody told him that, but God never seen him, never met him before in the natural. But this is what I'm telling you about being unified in the spirit of God. When we are many members of one body, God will have our brothers and sisters, no matter where we are. If we need to hear from God, or we're not listening, or God wants to hear more of them to speak into our life, through by the power of the Holy Spirit within us, we'll agree with their spirit. And so from what he was saying, I knew that was God. And I said, I received it. And I needed that. I needed that word. <laughs> hey, I've been praying to God about some things, but not knowing that just by me meeting someone and visiting their church, that that's where the, the word would come from. See, sometimes we so often we're waiting for God to speak to us through the Holy Spirit. We're waiting for God to speak to us through the word. But what God is doing is, when he said men are called for your children, he called, he equipped. God is allowing his other servants walking in their gifting to operate in the gifts. That's what the gifts for. See, sometimes we're waiting. That's what I'm saying. We need to seek God with our spiritual gifts and our calls are and be equipped. Because God, there are many people need to be healed, but they're not healed because someone is not walking in the gift of healing. There's many people that are in need that need to be encouraged. Someone's not encouraging. There's many people that need to um, be taught. They need, just like with us, somebody got the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. Um, but also, even in walking our gift of discernment, we got individuals that are, are growing spiritually in their spiritual gifts, uh, even the advantage of apostle, power, advantage of teaching. All these spiritual gifts that we have um, that we need to be equipped, but we're going to be equipped by like gifts, or we're going to be equipped by the service and message of God that know how all the gifts operate, although it's not their gifts. And that's a great responsibility and accountability, especially the pastors and leaders and those that have people in the ministry under them. Just because we don't have all these spiritual gifts, having a great accountability to make sure that everyone, whether it's our spiritual gift or not, should be able to know how to operate in their spiritual gifts. Should be able to teach and train them through by the leading of the Holy Spirit. How to operate the gifts. And that's why even you may have an apostle. They may be an apostle, but they may not have the gift of healing, but they may need healing. Then they got someone in ministry that had the gift of healing. And even the content of speaking in tongues, other than the tongues that, like when the church began and the Holy Spirit gave them all the utterance, uh, and it was the same by the same spirit, but even we praying the Spirit of God in our own prayer, having the language, praying back to God, conversing to Him, then we be edified within ourselves. Or sometimes when someone, everybody don't have the gift of speaking in tongues, and interpretation tongue as a gift, but some have that gift. When individuals are speaking, that the Holy Spirit will reveal to them what they're saying. So what I'm saying is, it's just a great accountability. So my brothers and sisters, I encourage you in closing because I'm going to go out to worship. <laughs> I'm going out to fellowship my brothers and sisters. Um, so what I'm saying is 
Seek God what your spiritual gifts are. Don't be afraid. None of us know everything. We're helpers of one another. I don't have all the gifts. But I tell you one thing, I thank God for the bishop that spoke into my life and speaking in the prophetic. I know he's a bishop, but he was prophesying in my life. But I know that what God had downloaded into him. See, just because we have the same gifts doesn't mean that we can't use the same gifts to help edify and build up one another. See, sometimes and some individuals think I'm the only one with the gift or the greater gift. Everybody is in different. Yes, I have gifts, but I'm growing in my spiritual gifts. And that's why I thank God for giving individuals that I fellowship oversight over me or allow me to be able to fellowship with them to help bring me up in my gifting. See, we grow the same way we grow from conception in the natural upon our glory. Be to, I got to get out of here. I'm getting excited now. The same way we upon conception and we grow. It's the same thing upon conception, being born again of the Spirit of God. We have to grow. This is what you call growing in spiritual maturity. We have to grow. And we're going to continue to grow. We should continue to grow. And we, where we was, we first believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We haven't grown. And we can't blame nobody but ourselves because we got to seek to want to grow in our spiritual maturity that we can bring glory to God here in the earth. Well, my brothers and sisters, I must go now. I love you to life. I'm just so excited to be back with you all, but I'm going out to worship today. Thank you all so much for joining on today. May God forever bless you and your ministry continue to do the work of the Lord. Continue to harvest souls for the kingdom of God. Continue to warfare, a good fight of faith. Remember that eyes haven't seen, nor ears have heard, nor entered into the heart of men. Thank God for people that love and trust him. And I tell you, there's greater work to be done in the kingdom of God. Yes, um, in every battle, some get wounded, some lose their lives. When we realize the greater reward that we shall receive, we are pressing with the mark for the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. And continue to do what you're doing. I'm going to continue. I'm not going to tell you the warfare ain't on. I'm going to keep smiling at God's glory. Like I said, ain't need to get mad about it. The word of God, he said it will happen. He said it will happen. Well, give me great glory and spirit of the warfare and the battles. And when I see souls get healed, the living set free, when I see somebody in armor of God and start praying and start fighting a good fight of faith and ain't murmuring, grumbling, and crying and and, and, and complaining and, and said that I don't know about you. I don't, I admit, I used to do like that too, but I don't make a mind when it's the warfare started get, coming on. I started get, when I get mad and angry with the devil, like I do a better fight of faith, like God is on there, Lord. See, that's what happens sometimes. The persecution sometimes got to come so pierced and sharp and fiery that it makes us so angry and mad with the devil and the demonic force and seeing people being battered, abused, and taken advantage of. That we start praying and fasting, clean and declaring the word of God and encouraging them and help them be uplifted and build it up. My brothers and sisters, continue to do what you're doing for God and knowing that. Continue to do, continue to be steadfast, um, move always abound in the work of the Lord for as much as you know. Your labor is not in vain. We may not be getting accolades and pets on the back and rewards here in the earth. I'm, hey, I ain't, I ain't looking for reward, rewards of man like I used to be. I'm just relying on God. I'm like, hey. I'm like Apostle Paul now. If we still here, it's that God to glorify. He must continue to do what we're doing, the serving here in the earth. And hey, like I said, to be absent by the presence of the Lord, even to be with him is still the greater. But since we're still here, we just will go ahead and do our assignments. And no matter what the cause, like I said, when we deny ourselves and pick up the cross and deny ourselves, that um, it caused warfare. But in the midst of the warfare, it should give us great joy to know that we are walking in the footsteps of Jesus and the same way he got exalted in the heaven on the right hand of the Father that you and I one day we will be with them face to face because of our faithfulness here in the earth and to the assignments to bring all the glory to him. God bless you all. May he forever keep you, your ministers, your family. Continue to do what you got to do for the upbuild of the kingdom of God at every cost. It's a cost. <laughs> it may not cost green money, but it costs. It takes costs time, prayer, and fasting, and faithfulness unto God. And it takes time to be equipped uh, for such a time as this. All right, so Holy Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the time that you've given us. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the anointing of God that destroys and rebounds you. We thank you for the people of God on today. We thank you, God, for pastors, leaders, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers everywhere all over the world. God, that they will rise, that they be stirred up within. They realize the great accountability and responsibility to equip the saints for the work of the ministry for this end time we're in. Praying even now, God, for those that need, um, they pastors and leaders, they may need uh, finances, that you will bless them because they take finances to continue to minister. You pray, God, also that, um, you would give them servants, faithful, committed servants, 
uh, the teaching train or that they may be added that are already chained have equipped them. Some, they just need individuals have them equip those that they have to carry out the um, assignment that you're giving them here on earth. Father God, some may um, need to be healed themselves. Uh, we know, God, uh, you said men are the fish of the rice, but you deliver them all to all. But you said some have been affirmed. But we thank you, God, in knowing that you're the one that healeth thee. You said, above all, that your will be prosper, being help is our soul prosper. So we thank you for the prosperity of the word that's in the body of every believer that those that need to be healed, those need to be delivered, those that may be um, going through this time of infirmities or affliction, Lord God, not because they're in the sin, but it could be a part of the equipping, Father God, for this end time we're in to be, the most, be able to withstand the torture, the torment, and the pain that we may have to face in this warfare battle that say, for God will live, for God will die, even in the midst of the pain. And the supper, we know God, no matter what God, you are our deliverer. You said you never leave nor forsake us. You will be to sit in. And we know you are embodying each and every one of us right now because of the power of your Holy Spirit. You said, although the outward man perish, in the man is renewed day by day. We thank you, God, for equipping my brother and sister with the refreshing of the Holy Spirit now that we be empowered the more that go forth and do all you command that we do in the earth, that you be magnified and glorified. We thank you, God, even for those that may not be saved. We thank you, Lord God, that wherever they are, that you will raise up labors wherever they are, that will go forth. As Apostle Paul asked them to pray, that those that are service, those that are witnesses, those that are using the spiritual gifts, that they will go forth in holy boldness, not that they will open their mouth and speak boldly, declare with the utterance of the Holy Spirit to give them to say, even when we do or don't want to say it, but we know it's you guys speaking, that we will not grieve or question the Holy Spirit. We will surrender to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is all knowing, all seeing. The Holy Spirit is the one that lead and guide us and direct us. So we give you glory and praise now, but we thank you, God, for being God. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that embody us. We thank you for our brothers and sisters that are part of the family of God, the world that may be, what it may be doing, that God, whatever they're in need of, God, that you grant according to your will, that you get the glory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining us on today. I give God all honor and glory and praise unto you. Continue to pray for me, and I continue to pray for you in Jesus Christ's name.